So I had a question, and the question was, um, quite some time ago on my YouTube channel, I made a motivational speech, and I talked about how uh, your job as a human right now is to connect with Source through your crown chakra, and to use this chakra, and perhaps your soul star chakra, which is up about here, and your third eye, and your throat chakra, I didn't mention your heart chakra, that's very important, and I should have included that. Uh, and I said, um, let go of being a physical human and become a communication port for spirit. And I told people, you know, it's very easy to get lost in your lower chakras, below your heart down here in your tummy and down there, you know, your root chakra and your sex chakra. And so many people get lost in those chakras, exploring what it's like to, you know, just indulge in wine, woman, and song. It's not fair to include song in that. Because song is, quite often, it's very heartfelt, and it's in here. And sometimes the stories that come through are, spirit stories from up here so wine woman and song let's drop the uh, the song how about the wine and the woman that's what we're talking about getting lost in being intoxicated and getting lost in um and the, in my speech i said like plenty of fish tinder and all these other um, apps because you're instrument that is this vessel this human body has capabilities that um you know your lower chakras don't have any interest in in other words if you when i said in my motivational speech if you were born as an animal you could wallow in the mud like a pig you could um, do all the animal things and in your human case, you have those options. And most people do like to play in those, uh, those chakras. But opening up these higher chakras uh, is the point of having a human body. Because these other animals actually have abilities that we don't even know about. Because the idea that animals cannot get in touch with spirit and these higher chakras is actually incorrect animals can so why aren't we taught this it's a big confusion for me because i was always reading for example in tibetan buddhism that if you uh, die you're supposed to go and follow certain paths if you're going to reincarnate as a human and if you go in and reincarnate as, for example, a duck, then you're going to waste that lifetime. And what I'm getting now is uh, perhaps if you became a duck, you might have a better chance at becoming an enlightened duck than an enlightened human. What? Well, the answer seems to be humans are totally brainwashed. We have got so much brainwashing with advertising, sexy movies, pornography, um, bars everywhere, advertising for booze. So perhaps uh, if you do want to reincarnate, try a duck because ducks are not brainwashed. And apparently this was a very... Um, hard to figure out but a teaching that is incorrect so in the meantime while you're in a human body why don't you want to get involved with doing lower chakra things the answer is because we are in hot water what do i mean by hot water uh, i mean we're in so much deep doo-doo we are unable to break free of what people call the matrix. Maybe it's not the matrix like the matrix movie, but our matrix is locked into a society that is not interested in 
connecting to higher spirit. Totally stuck at best in the head. And this is the trouble because people are so stuck in the head, they don't really know anything other than what they taught them. But who taught them? What people have taught them. It's we play, we're playing a monkey see monkey repeat story. You will see it on TV. You talk about it to your friend. Your friend sees you talking. Here's what you have to say. Spits it out. We live in a gossip society. We hear something and then we immediately tell somebody else just what we heard. Where's this information coming from? Media. And where does media get it from? I don't know, but I don't like what they broadcast all the time. It's garbage because it never teaches you anything about opening up your heart and lifting yourself up, connecting to your higher chakras and the spirit. Never, 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 never. So media is our enemy. And I know there's so many people who are like, I got to stay home and never go out because I don't want people to think that I am spreading some horrible virus. So what you've done is you've imprisoned yourself. Oh, I'll wait for a few months and then I'll be able to go out. Well, then what? In a few months, you can't really say whether there's not another virus they're going to say. I mean, this is a common cold virus. Coronavirus is common cold. And what we've been getting common cold every year, hundreds, thousands of years. It just comes around. So, you know, and then people are going to tell me, well, this one is different. This is like a SARS version of the common cold. And some people are getting intubated, putting a tube down their throat. And I have to tell you, what proof do you have other than the media story? Media wouldn't lie to me. I saw a doctor on the media. I'm terribly sorry, but media has an agenda. And their agenda is to keep you from connecting to your higher spirit, your wisdom, so that you can figure out for yourself what's truth and what's not true. What do you mean? I mean, where do you think the great masters are? get their information from while well, they study with other masters true but what else do they do they spent millions of hours in meditation by themselves and that's where the original best teachings came from people sitting in meditation and if you don't meditate then the best you're ever going to do is monkey see and monkey speak it to another monkey what about science? People always tell me about science. Science says this. Science says, you know, quarantine this. If you're ever going to figure out how to get involved with something greater than what you read in a textbook, I know, but all those experiments, they do all these clinical studies. If you're ever going to really understand anything to do with science... Start reading uh, scientific journals. There's a lot of them available on the internet. I've done it. You do it yourself. I'll tell you what I got. And you go and look and you see what you get. What I get is it's impossible. It's impossible to learn from scientific journals. Because the scientists are constantly bickering with one another over, uh, you made some problem, you made an error with your study, and this is it. And it's endless, back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. Do they ever solve the problem? You're going to be long dead. And that's just if you're studying one particular area of study. Very narrow. Very narrow. 
And if you want to try start, uh, studying something that's wide, uh, look at scientists that were... Hmm, let's talk about HIV. The scientists like uh, Professor Duesberg, who was an outcast, molecular biologist, or Carrie Mullis, who invented the viral load tests that are used for HIV, and what they had to say about it. Carrie Mullis said, uh, you shouldn't be using this technology for testing for viral load. He invented the PCR test, and he said, you shouldn't be using it. That's, it's, it's, that's what he said. But if you go through and you look at what Duesberg said, and then you look at all the other people who were against Duesberg, and then you go through with all the the sightings that they cite about this, that, the next thing. You can spend a hell of a long time, and all the conclusions that I ever come up with is these scientists will never agree. So there's no such thing as science says no. If you think that's the case, you haven't done your research. You need to go and study journals, and go back and forth and see how scientists talk to one another. Then you have to go and find the article from the New Jersey, New England Journal of Medicine, the former editors of New Jersey. Why do I say New Jersey? It's New England Journal of Medicine. The former editors blew the whistle and they said, uh, we had to quit because we were disgusted at what the studies that were being published. And this is supposed to be the best medical journal on the planet. And they're saying the studies are garbage. You go find it. You just go look for it on the internet. You'll find it. So I'm not going to go any further into science says this. Because I could go on forever. And it's not going to change your mind if you're a science says this. You know, I heard my doctor or a doctor or something say this. You don't understand. You have to dig into it before your eyes open up and you go, these doctors don't disagree with one another. They always go. In other words, I don't have any more things to tell you. So I'm going to agree with you now. Science says this. So you go back to whatever you're doing. And um, don't expect anyone else to tell you what I've told you. Because I'm a unique person. And I have a unique point of view. And maybe you think I'm a crackpot. But I've done my research. And all I can do is communicate to you. And, you know, I've just got a YouTube channel or an Instagram channel. I don't have NBC News at 6.30 with Lester Holt. So if you've seen my point of view, you're a pretty rare person on the planet. How does it benefit you? It doesn't necessarily benefit you to hear my point of view unless you decide, um, well, the least I can do is just research a few items. Because otherwise, I'm just another talking head. Until you start using your mind for yourself and you're not brainwashed by Lester Holt. Uh, Lester Holt's a pretty good guy. If that's the way you feel, then you're brainwashed. Because they're just giving you information. And if they could be lying to you about whatever whatever doctors they picked, are they paid to say what they're, what they're saying to you? You don't know who they are. They could be actors. You know that a lot of those big pharmaceutical uh, commercials in the very small print that you can't read at the bottom, but they have it quite often. They said, uh, this doctor is played by an actor. It's true. You know advertisements, they use actors. So who's to say that they haven't got actors on there playing doctors for you? 